Good afternoon and welcome to the Truth Gospel. The Truth Gospel is from the Light Ministry International. The Light Ministry is reaching out to all people in the world with the life of Christ. Our vision is to bring light to every community. We want to welcome you today and this is the Monday edition of the Truth Gospel. And we hope you had a good weekend. Today we're going to be discussing the doctrine of predestination and election. This is the series that we are going to discuss for a length of time to give ourselves an understanding of who we really are in Christ. I have said over and over here that the, we don't serve God with ignorance. We serve God with an understanding. We serve God with knowledge. This knowledge it is not of many wise, of prudent. This knowledge is not of many nobles. It is precise and accurate knowledge. Thus is Greek word called gnosis. It's epinosis. It's precise and accurate knowledge. If you want to serve God, you got to serve God with understanding. You don't serve God with ignorance. So it is important to search the scriptures. Jesus said, For in them are they which testify of me. So friends and family, Brothers and sisters, I want you to open your hearts and your mind. Invite others. Share the video. As we search the scriptures to give our lives a new meaning in Christ Jesus. Predestination and election what it means predestination means that um, you were ordained you were approved you were chosen before the foundation of the word even as the son was chosen by God the son Jesus was preordained he was foreordained 
Jesus, the Son, was internally foreordained by God. That means it must have been with the full knowledge of God. The full understanding of God, the full knowledge. It's a decree of God. Preordination. Preordaining. Predestination is past, present, and future. So, if you are saved today and born, if you are saved, you weren't or choosing today. You must have been choosing, ordained, predetermining with the full counsel of God before you receive salvation today. Then election, election, Those who are chosen and preordained by God are the elect of God. They call out the church, the bride, the ecclesia. Now, let me explain something. Election in the word. It's a process. It's a democratic process through which officers, public officers or public official are elected by their constituent. So the constituencies elect public officers the go to election with several people several options and they make a choice they narrow down to one person or a few people and pick these people in their district or county or state or country so those who are elected are the elect so you find the British Parliament the parliamentarian in the British Parliament are the elect in the US Congress you have over 400 members 100 of the House of Senate and so all these members both the Senate and the House are the elect they were elected by citizens of the United States to serve in public offices. They were chosen, they were, they were elected on the basis of choice. So God's elect 
was chosen, set apart in the Son. Those are the ones for whom Christ died. They are to show forth God's glory in Christ. So we have to understand predestination. We have to understand predestination. What it means. Predestination has salvation. Salvation brings internal life. Internal life is a gift from God. And the way to have internal life, you must believe the testimony of God. But you don't believe by yourself in absolution. You're going to have to believe based on the work that God has done internally. Void of any man's contribution. Void of any man's idea. God by himself has done this work. Eternal life is a gift. God made God made it available to you. Not of work that any man should boast. But God by himself in his infinite wisdom and knowledge choose us he called us, set us apart before the foundation of the word. Everybody is now going to be saved. But God says, go to the word and preach the gospel to all every creature. He will believe. He will believe and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe is condemned. But everyone are not going to believe. Because to believe and to be saved has to be done by God. It is not of your effort. So we have to understand predestination and election. So God chose us based on his choice. Not because we did something or we made some contribution. As I've explained to you how people are elected to public offices. It's called election. God also chooses his people in his son before the foundation of the world. The son is the internal son. You are foreordained for salvation. But was manifest in these last times for us. I want us to see uh, 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 the scripture in Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. So predestination is explained in two fourth. If you are chosen today, you must have been chosen before. If you get salvation today and born again, it was predetermined, foreordained. Decree before it has happened today. 
Those who God love, He chooses them. Okay, let us turn to Romans chapter 8 and see what the scripture says. But we're going to find some other scriptures to support our argument. Romans chapter 8. And I want us to read from verse 29. For whom? Now, as we read, I want us to observe the tenses of the word. It's going to help us as we study together. Watch the tenses of the word. What is in the past is it, is, is it present or is it in the future? Let what they observe the tenses of the words. So the scripture says, For whom he foreknew, he foreknew, that's in the past. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined. To be conformed to the image of his son. Conforming is becoming like whom he foreknew, he predestined, he decreed, he ordained, he destined, he ordained whom he foreknew. He ordained that they should be conformed to his to the image of his son. So if you are born today as a Christian, you must have been picked, chosen, set apart by the internal God before the world began. He chooses you for his glory. That is election. Okay, let's keep reading. Who he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, Jesus is the perfect example of everything that we are. Jesus is the perfect example. Jesus was foreordained by the Father. And somebody said, Pastor Sam, so where was Jesus? Jesus was not in heaven, passing around that everybody saw as a son. He was a thought. He was a thought in the Father. He was a thought. Premeditated thought. I'll show that to you in a little bit. But I keep uh, uh, reading this and see. So uh, it's good to serve God. You don't go to church. And you're serving God with our knowledge. We sing many songs in our churches. And not even a uh, 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 biblical. It has no basis. And so we do many things that has no basis. We say many words that has no scriptural backing. Because we don't have the full knowledge. And this knowledge is called epinosis. A precise and accurate knowledge. That's why we want to allow ourselves to serve God and grow and be conformed to the image of the son Jesus. But that has to do with knowledge. A proper teaching. So he says, he conformed to be the image of the son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, verse 30, moreover then, he, he predestined he also called, whom he called, 
does he also justify? So God foreknew. He ordained. When he ordained, he predestined that pre so he, he kept them for they are they were being kept for the future. He predestined. Does he predestined? He called. Does he call? He justified. What do I mean by justified? Those who God choose and call as the elect in election, he justifies them. God declares them non guilty through the shedding of the blood of Jesus from the atonement. He declares them non guilty. Does God allow to have faith to believe the message of his son and those that are names that are written in the land book of life? Their names are written in the land book of life. Does he for new? He predestined. Does he predestine? He ordained. Does he ordain? He called. Does he call? He justify. The word justify is to be declared not guilty. He made you rapture. And gave you his nature. He changes everything about your inner person. So the man who is born again with the life and the nature of God. God has to give him new spirit. Because the first man is a fallen man. Is in the fallen state. When Adam disobeyed the divine order and the divine commandment of God and committed high treason, men fall with Adam. Now that fall is called death. It's not the cessation of life. It's a spiritual separation from God. God told Adam, the day you eat of the fruit, you shall surely die. And when Adam did, he died the very moment. Someone said, Pastor Sam, but Adam lived 930 years. Yes, a man is dead while he is in pleasure. That was spiritual separation. He was far from God. He had no access to God. He had no peace with God. So those who were predestined, Jesus came and died and restored them back to God. So he says here again, verse 31. What then shall we say to those things, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's it. I'm sorry. Let's continue. What then shall we say to those things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but deliver him up for us. For us all. How, how shall he not with him? also freely give us all things. If God did this, how can God not give us all things? Everything we have are in the sun. We are in the sun. Wherever he is today is where we are. I want to open your mind to who is a Christian, who is a believer, who is born again, you can't be born again and live that you are not born again. So let us keep reading verse 32, I mean 33. Who shall bring a charge 
against God's elect. God chosen people. The scriptures say, who's going to bring a charge, accusation against God's elect? Now watch there as we read. Who can bring a charge against God's elect? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? He says, it is God who justify. What does he what that does this mean? God is the judge. God is the chief justice. So who's going to bring charge against God's own chosen people? He is the judge. He's the judge. He's the chief justice. He's the judge. So who's going to bring a charge against the very people whom God foreknew, whom he predestined, whom he chose, whom he called, whom he justified? Who's going to bring a charge against those people? When God himself is the judge. He goes on to say this, Who can bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he to condemn? Who to bring condemnation on those who God has said they are my people? Who is he to bring a condemnation on God's chosen people? The scripture says, whoever is blessed cannot be cursed. When God called Ezra and blessed Ezra as a fresh child, Balaam tried to curse Ezra. It couldn't work. Because whoever is blessed is blessed. Cannot be cursed. So he asked the question, who can condemn those who God chooses? God's elected one, how could they be condemned? Glory to God. It is Christ. Now listen to the why you can't bring a charge against them and why you are not able to condemn those who God pick and choose. You can't condemn them because it is God who is the judge. You can bring a charge against them because God is the judge. You can condemn them because Christ died for them. You can bring a condemnation because Christ has died for them. Look here. Who can bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who can condemn? It is Christ who died and furthermore is risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who is making intercession for us? So you can condemn those who God has picked and choose. Because God chose them, not today, internally they were chosen. God predestined them. He said, who can bring a charge against them? God is the judge. Who can condemn God's elect? Christ has died for them and furthermore is raised for them. And he's making intercession for them to God. How can they be condemned? So predestination, you were chosen 
you were called, you were ordained, for ordained, knew by God before you even got born again. And to get born again, you was helped by God. He himself gave you faith to believe his words. He gave you a spirit and the new spirit could believe the word when it's taught and preached. You did nothing to be saved. Salvation is solely on God. It's based on grace. Grace means unmerited favor. A divine help of God. It's a grace through faith. The faith he talks about is the faith of God. That God gives to each person who is born again. Every one of us receives a measure of faith to believe God's words in salvation. You don't come to God if he didn't have you before. Glory to God. You must have been chosen by God to receive salvation. I want us to keep reading. So you see, he lets it out. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? There is a unity. There is a love that God lavished on us. And the love is in Christ. No man can separate us from that bond, from the love of Christ. I'm just trying to lay the basis before we run, run into scriptures. I want to lay the basis to build a foundation. Then we can uh, uh, build on the foundation with scriptures. He says here, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, there is no amount of trouble that can take you away from Christ. If he did call you, if God choose you, if God ordained you, if God set you apart to show forth his glory, you cannot be taken away from God. Because it was not your plan to be born again. It is God's plan for your life. I want you to understand this. It is not in the power of any pastor. It is not even in your own power to be saved. It is God's grace. Unmerited favor. Lavish on you to save you. So he says here, look at that verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or, or, or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or soul as it is written for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than a conqueror through him who loved us. In all these things, we are more than a conqueror through him, not through ourselves, not in our own strength, not in our own ability, not in our own might, but through him who loved us and called us. No amount of temptation can take you away from Jesus. If you are truly called and saved, you are saved. So let us uh, uh, support these things that are said with scripture. I want us to start from Ephesians chapter 1 or 2. Out of them would be good. I can explain from both of them, but let's start from Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. If 
Ephesians chapter 1. I want us to start reading from verses 1 to 5. Ephesians 1 says, Paul and apostles of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, not by his own will, he became an apostle by the word of God. Verses 2. To the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. Watch this. Grace to you, peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has washed the tenses of the word as we read. Who has? He's not thinking about. He's done it. Like I explained to you, those who he foreknew, he chose. Those who he chose, he predestined. Those who he predestined, he justified. Those whom he justified, he glorified. The time is coming that our body will change into the body of the Son of God. Right now, our spirit man is safe. Our spirit are safe. It is sealed. But our body will change when the Son of Man shall have appeared in His glory. We shall put on immortality and have the same body with God. But as He is, so we are now in this world. You say, how, Pastor Sam? Your spirit man, as he is, so you are. Your salvation is not based on your own mind. It's not based on your own effort. It's not based on your own strength. It's not based on your own ability. It is God who has divinely gave you favor, unmerited favor. He gave you a gift. Salvation is a gift. Eternal life is a gift. Righteousness is a gift. So when I'm giving you a gift, all you do is to receive. Even to receive this gift, God has to make you to have faith, which also is a gift. To believe his words. If God does not open your heart, you can never understand or you may not understand. You may not understand those things which are taught and preached. You have to be quickened by the Spirit of God. And this is what I'm taking you to. So, the first man was there. But God is going to give you life so you can believe His words. So the scripture says in verse 3, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has passed him, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly. Hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the heavenly places, in Christ, just as, now watch this now, I told you, if you weren't chosen by God then, you cannot be chosen. Or you, you won't be chosen today. He chooses you before you even thought about getting salvation. It is God's plan. It is not our plan. It is God's plan for his glory. So see here, just as he chose us in him, before the foundation of the word. And I told you. So you were chosen. You were preordained. You were set apart. You were being uh, 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 ordained, decreed, forecast by God. But all uh, it was manifest in the last time. I'll show that to you. He says, 
before the foundation of the world that he he said that we should be holy without blame before him in love. So God chose us, made our holy, set us apart, blameless. He said, before the foundation of the world, God did this thing. Let me explain something to you. During the time of redemption, God was looking for a man to use. The Bible says, he looked on earth that was not formed. He looked below the earth that was not formed. Because everything on the earth is corrupt from the fall of Adam. He looked in heaven that was not formed because the angels has the same nature with God. The angels have no flesh and blood so they couldn't have been used for sacrifice to redeem us he made a body so he looked in heaven that was not formed let's go to the scripture because we'll come back here it's good that we kind of go to the, go to revelation chapter 5 Read that quick and to see, you see the predestination. God is not thinking about doing it today. He's done it. That one making God. The Bible says, And I saw, and I saw the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a scroll written inside and on the back side with seven seals. Revelation chapter 5, verses 2. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scar and to lose a seal? What is he saying? Who is able to fulfill the things that are written in the seal, in the book? Who can fulfill them? Who is worthy to perform those things which are written? Verses 3. And no one in heaven or on earth or on the earth was able to open the scroll and to take the and to take or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was formed worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. So John said in the revelation, I wept because there was none worthy. That means our salvation was in jeopardy. He said, I wept much. There was not found in heaven, not found on the earth, not found below the earth. And John says, I wept much because there was not found to open the scroll or to even look at it. But then let's read. Verses 5. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. I told you, has prevailed. So the lion prevailed. Jesus, the son, was slain, was killed. Before the world began, but came in the last time to manifest that which God has already done. This is the predestination that I'm trying to lay out to us so we understand these things well. He says, The elder said to me, John, don't weep any longer because the lion from the trap. Of Judah from the house of David, from the stain of Jesse, from the lineage of Abraham, has prevailed. Has prevailed. What did he prevail over? Let us keep reading. Has prevailed to open the scroll 
and to loose at seven seals. And I look, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as, oh glory to God, as though it has been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. Sent out into all the earth, verse 7, then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell on their fell on their forehead, fell before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take away this car and open it. To open a seal. For you were wash the tensor of the word again. For you were slim before the foundation of the word. What there is there? You are worthy to take the scroll and open a seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. And has redeemed us to God by your blood. These things took place before the Son came to manifest them, to reveal them in the last time, which I'm going to show you in a little bit. See? Verse 10. And have made us kings and priests to our God, and we should, we should reign on the earth. So it is God predetermined just before we were breath. Okay, let me show you before we go back to Ephesians, since I've spoken about the predestination of the Son. I got to back that up with the scripture. Then we go back to Ephesians. Turn to Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. Glory to God. I love this thing. I love this thing. If I don't talk about Jesus, who else could I be talking about? There was a time in my life, night and day, I have the top politics. I was a frame defender of the Liberian president, President Josh Weir. I have to talk night and day, find why he was right. Even if he was wrong, we have to make it right. So I love this thing. If I don't talk about God, I don't talk about Jesus, who else could I have been talking about? But God have mercy on me and pull me out of darkness. God has called me out of destruction and has revealed this and has given me this ability. And I must use it right. So Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, glory to God. I'm so excited when I'm talking about Jesus. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 2. Elect according to the full knowledge of God. What did you see? Full knowledge means God had a prior knowledge. Before. <laughs> Peter is preaching. So the brethren who were scattered at the result of prosecution. And Peter is preaching to them because they are in foreign, they, 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 are, they are in foreign land. And Peter is telling them, here, elect, choose sin of God. Elect according to the full knowledge of God. The Father in sanctification of the Spirit. Now you see how 
It means it's faith. It is God's own will. God's own effort. Without any help. He sanctifies you. He justifies you. He cleans you. He declares you not guilty. All these things I say is on God. No man can boast of any man being a Christian. You say, I, I brought that person to Christ. You don't bring anybody to Christ. Because if God don't open their heart, they can't believe the message. So let us keep traveling. He says, For obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now you see that? So God, the man used the word who has begotten us again. So we were begotten by God. I don't feel we fall. And God had a rebirth. So he said, who has begotten us again through the resurrection of the blood of Jesus. This is the gospel. I love this thing. Now verses 4. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefined, that does not fail away, reveal in heaven for you. Five, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation. So you were kept by God's own power through faith for salvation. How are you going to serve God without God? How are you going to love God without God? How are you going to be saved without God? How are you going to be called without God? How are you going to be justified without God? Everything is of Him. We live in Him and have our being. The air that we breathe is of God. The breath in our nostril is of God. He gave us permission to be alive. Why did He do that? For His glory. For His glory. So let's keep reading. The power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So he kept us and was revealed in the last time. But I want to take you where I really want to go. Let us uh, 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 go to verse 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 8 it says whom having not seen you love through now you do not see him yet believe you rejoice with joy expressible and full glory receiving the end of your faith the salvation of your souls. Of their salvation. Listen to this. I want you to pay keen attention. Of their salvation. I'm going to explain how it happened. I told you. Of their salvation. The prophets. Have inquired. And searched carefully. Who prophesy. Of the grace. That who come to you. Searching what? Or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified before him, he te testified before him the suffering of Christ and the glories that who follow. 12. To them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us. There were many stories, the things which now have been reported to you 
through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. Angels are confused. But how did God choose these people? How is God in alignment with these people? So he says, angels are looking into this. But that is not what I want to show you. What I want to show you in verses 19. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to your name. Verse 90 says, Verse 90 says, but with the, with the precious blood, listen to this. Verse 90 says, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot, he indeed was foreordained. He indeed was foreordained. When was he foreordained? Before the foundation of the word, but was manifest in these last times for you. And I told you, the son was chosen, foreordained by God, but was manifest in these last times for you. Verse 19, let me read that over again. In fact, let's start from 18. So you can understand what he's saying. Your 18 said, knowing that that you were not, you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your animals' conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a land without blemish, without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the word, but was manifest in this last time for you. Predestination. Jesus, the Son of God, was chosen, preordained, and was revealed in this last time. Now, let me take this further. Peter also spoke in the book of Acts when Jesus rose and they received the Holy Spirit. Peter preached the same message. Let me support it. Predestination. God loved those he chose and gave them salvation. But he says, go to the world and preach. And we are preaching the gospel. But I want to tell you, God has chosen you before the foundation of the world. To be in Christ. Let us go to Acts chapter 2, verse 22 and 23. Acts chapter 2. I want, I want you to, to read with me to verse 22 into 23. It says, men of, men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him which God did through him in your midst, as you yourself also knew, also knew him, being delivered, I want you to listen to this, being delivered by the determining purpose and full knowledge 
of God. Jesus was delivered to Pontius Pali. Jesus was delivered to the Jews. Jesus was delivered to the elders. Jesus was delivered to be killed. The scripture says it was done with the determining counsel. That means God planned it. God knew it. God allowed. God accepted. God gave him up to be killed. With the full knowledge. With God understanding. With the full knowledge. God was not in absolution. And I'm telling you. So God is not thinking about loving you today. I say you are a chosen generation. You are God's own chosen people. You are peculiar. You are a special person to God. Don't look down upon yourself. If you are a child of God, choosing before the foundation of the world, He chooses you to show forth His glory. <laughs> wow. Being delivered by the determining purpose and full knowledge of God. You have taken by Lord's hands and have crucified and put to death. But Peter says it was with the full knowledge of God. It was with the understanding. It was God's decision that he should be put to death. When did this happen? From the foundation of the world. That's what I'm trying to say. Hallelujah. So let us go to, let's go back to Afisha. So Afisha chapter 5. Having, having predestined, having predestined us to be a, for adoption, to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to God's pleasure of his will. So it is God's pleasure that we be in Christ, that we be redeemed. We were chosen. This is predestination. With the full knowledge of God, with the determining counsel, full knowledge, understanding of God, that they should be so. I love this. Verse 6. Why God? Why you did this before? For, he said, number one, for his pleasure. Number two, to the praise of his glory, of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his glory. Hmm. Verse 2. Listen to verse 2. So Peter said, God has begotten us again. That means we were begotten. Now look at verse 2. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. And you, he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked, you once walked according to the cause of this word, according to the prince of the power of the earth, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So at a point in time, in your fallen state, you were a sinner, a child of the devil. So you understand what's going on? You see predestination? God for new. For Peter said, it was done with the full knowledge of God, with the understanding of God, but was manifest in these last times. So even us, we were choosing Preordain, decree, we were called in the sun before the foundation of the world. God is not doing this today. And I'm saying our salvation is not based on any effort that we have applied. 
It is a divine help, unmerited favor, that God by himself, through the infinite wisdom and his knowledge, has designed this plan. And the scripture said, before the foundation of the world, the Son, the internal Son of God, was speak by God, but was a thought. In these last times, God revealed for our glory. So, brothers and sisters, you are not saved today. You've been saved before. I said, you were saved. You were called. You were chosen. Elected by God before today. This is predestination and election. This is God's will. He chooses us in himself. Election has to do with God's choice. God's election is not based on democracy. God's election is not based on justice. God's election is not based on anyone's will. It's God's own will. He chooses Abraham. He chooses Isaac and chooses Jacob. He chooses Ezra. He has not chosen us as a people, but we were not chosen today. He chose us before. I love this. So you see, he said, you he made alive. Verse 3. Among whom also we all conducted ourselves in the loss of the, our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of mind, and were by nature children of wrath. As the others. Look at verse 4. So we were by nature Children of wrath, as the others who are not saved. But some God did something special. Look at verse 4. But, but God, but God, I love this. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made our life together with Christ. So those who he foreknew, who he called, those who he called, who he chose, those who he chose, he justified, those he justified are in his son. So even in our loss, we were predestined. Even as we fall, we were chosen. Look here. He made our life together. With Christ, by grace, you have been saved. And raised us up together. And made us set together. In the heavenly places in Christ. This is where every believer, child of God, except Paul used the word in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He said, that which I receive, I give you. Christ died. And was buried and was raised according to the scripture. He said, Except you believe in vain. But if you did not believe in vain, you are seated in Christ. You were raised with Christ. So your salvation is not any effort or something you have done. It rests on God. He made a choice. Before you even talk about it. Now let me say something to you. I went to church. One time. In. Restoration Power Ministry. At Jamaica Road. And that Sunday Pastor Dowie. Was preaching. But I have been going to church. I've, I've read the scriptures, but I was not really safe. And many are like that today in church. When Pastor Dowie preached that Sunday, my heart was open and the scripture came alive. 
And after that, I started going to church regularly, going attending Bible studies. Now, before you start to love God, it is God who works in you both to will and to do, not by your strength. It is not him who will it. It is not him who wrong, but it is God who show mercy. Except God gave you a divine help. You can know God. I see people try to serve God with, with, with intellect, with knowledge, with the academics. You can know God. Except God help you. So God help me that day. And Pastor Dowie preach, And the scripture came alive to me. And I didn't know why. From that time. And I was about to come to the United States. I didn't know why God just changed my life that way. And I started to be serious and regular to attorney church. Going to Bible study. But before I have to go to the video club. When the games are playing on Sunday. And I will watch one football game from the morning to night. If I'm not doing that, I'm talking politics. I'm in the street. And I'm debating about Josh Weir. From morning to night, I don't get tired. But when it please God, who is all merciful, who is all knowing, who knows his own, he has chosen me before I even went to church for Pastor Dowie to preach. The Bible says in the book of Acts, Paul went to preach to certain women and there was a woman by the name of Lydia. God opened her heart and half out to believe the things that Paul preached. So in the doctrine of regeneration, God has to change everything about your inner person. Give you faith. And so when he gave you faith, if the word is preached to you, you can believe the word to be saved. But when the God save you, was at the time it was done, the scripture says, before the foundation of the world, he chose you in Christ for his praise to do good works. Not today, before the foundation of the world. He made his choice. So election is not based on uh, uh, democracy. It's not based on justice. It's based on God's own choice. And I'm so grateful to God to allow me to do this. I have not gone through the rings and fire of the biblical academias. So I've not gone to Bible school. But God has helped me to understand these things. So if I don't talk about Jesus, who else could I be talking about? So these things was God's plan. So I want us to, to, to see the thing clearly. Verse 8. I want to explain that I've told you predestination is, is, uh, is in two fourth. It's in two fourth. The first one we explain from Romans chapter 8, verse 29 to 30 and 35. We explain, does he foreknew? Even Jesus dealt with, with the predetermination, with the full knowledge and the counsel of God. In the same vein, your salvation was in the full knowledge of God. And somebody said, I led that person to Christ. You don't lead nobody to Christ. Christ Himself called. He said, my sheep knows my voice. He stood before Pali. Pali said, are you a king? He said, I was born for this reason. For the truth. Pali said, what is truth? <laughs> and he said, those, he said, those, my sheep knows my voice. Pali said, what is truth then? Pali marvel. He said, but my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, my disciple would have fought for me. But for this purpose, I was born. So it was already done in the heaven before he was manifest. As Peter told us in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 19. 
you will break their sting. For ordain. So Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. I wanted to see something here. He said, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. Grace is the mercy, divine help, unmerited favor that God gives you. Everything we receive from God is a gift. No one works for it. Internal life is a gift. Salvation is a gift. Faith is a gift. God gave you a measure of faith to believe the word, to be saved. How is it your own effort? Somebody said, the man don't believe the thing we preach because it is not for him. Glory to God. So grace, faith, is made available. In your heart. And to believe the word. This is preached destination. I wanted to close on this last scripture. Because this is a series that we are going to continue with. The reasons why we try to do this. As God help us. We want to help the word. Because this is the program. The truth gospel. We want to reach out to all people in the world with the life of Christ. But we have to serve God with knowledge. And this knowledge is accurate and precise knowledge. Epinosis. If you serve God with ignorance, you will be duped, calm, lied to, and be given false impression. People will say things that are not supported by the scripture. When Jesus rose, and I'm trying to close now, when Jesus rose, when Jesus was born on the earth, it was by scripture. When Jesus started to preach, it was by scripture. There were prophecy of Jesus' birth. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. A child a virgin shall be with a child. And his name shall be called Emmanuel. That prophecy was fulfilled. In Luke chapter 1, verse 26, when the angel Gabriel appeared to the lady from the bush, a, 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 a village girl. So, I love scripture. I love the authority of the scripture. If you have your personal experiences. It cannot supersede the scripture. Today some Pentecostal and uh, charismatic people who are very arrogant. Don't want to allow the scripture to be the authority. They want to deceive people. Don't use your experience with the scripture. Paul did not use his experience with the scripture. He allowed the word of God to be the final arbiter. So let's build our doctrine on the doctrine of the apostles. When Jesus rose, he opened their understanding with scripture. Not Jesus didn't give them free lecture. He caught that scripture. He said, this is what I told you, that the Christ will suffer many things and will be delivered to the chief priest. And will be put to death. And will rest on the third days. Beginning from Moses. The prophets and the song. So I love the scripture. When I'm teaching. I love to back my statement of the scripture. Because Jesus says. We should search the scriptures. He said believe. As it is written. Not as it is made or suggested. So, brothers and sisters, let us read Titus chapter 1, 3, Titus chapter 3 as we close. And we will continue on this topic. I want to recognize uh, my father, Pastor Joseph Lassanan. You are welcome, Daddy. God bless you, sir. 
and I I think my pastor who took me down in water and baptized me was also listening all oh, pastor Francis Roger you are welcome sir God bless you these are the people who I learned from so uh, Titus chapter 3 verses 4 and 5 Title 3 and I want to read from verse 3 to 4 and 5 verse 3 says for this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses oh sorry I'm reading Hebrew okay 3 right here Title chapter 3 verses 3 to 5 for we ourselves were also one foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various loss and pleasures, living in malice, envy, hateful, hating one another. Fourth, but, I told you, but, when the kindness and the love of God our Savior towards men appear. This is the thing that drives men. No one drives themselves to any church. There is a strong force, a compelling force that drives you. That God Himself. You see here, verse 5 not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the holy spirit whom he pulled out on us abundantly through jesus christ our savior where else you got saved Jesus said, no one comes to me unless the Father draws him. In St. John chapter 10 verse 28. He said, I gave them eternal life. You don't, you don't work for this thing. You don't, you don't ask for it. God just loves you. Even the faith of belief, he, gave, he made the faith available. I want to stop here and I'll thank God for you shared our videos and invite others. Father, we thank you for your word. I ask the Lord that you open our heart and our minds. Let your word come alive in our heart. Help us, O oh God, because we come not in our own strength, but ourselves. We can do these things. We will not be able to do them. Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, help us to live the life that you have created us after in true righteousness and holiness. Help us, O oh Lord, to do your will and not our will. Thank you, Father. Lead us with excellence, sound mind, in the name of Jesus. Take your glory and honor in Jesus' name. God bless you.